So today we're talking about business growth strategy and it's part two of the three parts that we're going to cover on the topic. Today we're covering innovate and then in the next session we will cover dominate. So this is absolutely full of ideas on how to create growth in your business, no matter what your business is. Doesn't matter what industry you're in. Um, so get a pen and paper and we're gonna get some strategies mapped out for you. Now, last session, we talked about how to replicate for success, which is simply do more of what's working. So today we're gonna talk about the power of shaking things up. Sometimes the key to big growth is new perspective. So we're gonna talk about how you find that perspective and inspiration and how to apply it for growth. And you can apply innovation to all areas of your business. And it starts by evaluating what you currently have in place. So I'm going to give you some questions that you can jot down and you can really think about how these apply to your business and how you can use these to build your business strategy. And the first one, uh, and you know, everyone, when they think, oh, they're going to build their sales, they start thinking marketing and sales, but a lot of it actually starts in earlier in the process in your processes and your systems. So let's start with that. Think about your processes in customer service and sales and marketing and, and all of those things. How can you change your processes to better serve and sell? So if you look at any hangups that you have in your system, are there places in your, in your funnel as you move people through their customer journey or through their journey with your, with your company, um, where are they getting stuck? Where are you losing people? Where, where are the, the, the pain points that they're finding with you? Where do you get a lot of complaints? Any of those things, those are all areas that you wanna look at and figure out how can you improve that process to better serve your customers, to sell more, to upsell, to cross sell, to, to, you know, to resell to people. Really look at those pain points in your customer journey. It's gonna be different for everybody. Everybody's business is, is, is gonna be a little bit different, but you need to look at yours and see where you're losing people. You know, Maybe you're getting people to sign up to be on your email list. And then after a month, they seem to be dropping off. You seem to lose a lot of people. Why is that, right? So sit down, look at your processes and see how you can better serve and sell. Then you wanna look at your systems. So how can you implement systems that will make you more efficient and free up your time to focus on other areas? There's so many, you know, we when we start our businesses, there's so many things we're doing all the things and we're doing all of the things manually quite often, but as you start to grow and as you start to, you know, your, your business starts to expand, you, you tend to keep doing it manually because you don't have time to figure out another way to do it, but it's gotta stop at some point because you can't do it manually forever and you're wasting a lot of time by not putting a system in place. So again, sit down, look at where are you spending your time? And a great way to do this is to actually, um, track your time for at least one full day. It's If you do it for a week, that's amazing. But one or two days at least, sit down and track every single 10 minute, 15 minute block what you're doing so that you can go back at that to that after a couple of days and you can actually see where your time's going. And then mark next to those things, you know, dollar signs next to the ones that make you money, maybe stars next to the ones that you really enjoy doing, maybe, you know, frowny faces next to the ones that you really, they feel really heavy and they're time suckers and you wish you could get rid of them and really see where you're spending your time. And if you find that there's certain tasks that you are doing over and over again, maybe it's invoicing, you know, maybe it's um, editing a podcast or something, whatever it happens to be that you're spending a lot of time on that you don't really need to be the person spending time on that maybe you can outsource or you could put a system in place to automate it then those are great areas to make yourself more efficient because once you free up that time, you can spend that on your business development. You can start working on your business instead of in your business. So that's a really critical thing to sit down and, and really evaluate as well. You also wanna look at your market. Here's another great way to innovate. Look at your current market that you're already serving and look for new products that you could offer them? Are there things that they've always asked you for that you haven't had available that you could offer them? Are there you know, changes that you could make to your product? Are there things that you could upsell them that's just a natural upsell? So a great way to innovate is to actually look at your current market, the people that already love you, they already have that relationship with you, what else can you serve them with? Um, and then the, the flip side of that is to look at what new markets might have emerged that you could sell your products to. So maybe when you started, or maybe when you started looking at building your business, maybe you've just started your business um, and you had certain market in mind, 
are there other markets that your product is actually, or your service is actually really well suited for that you haven't really been targeting? Um, that's a great way to expand very quickly. If you can find, because you've already got your, your business set up, you've already got the product set up. Now you're just tapping into a new market. So it's another great way to innovate. Think about how you can better address your customers or clients needs. Um, innovation so often comes from your customers, from their questions, from their comments, from their feedback. It's really important. And again, something we don't do enough to, to solicit that feedback from your clients and your customers and, and, and even your prospects, you know, even the people that haven't purchased from you, but are engaged and on your mailing list or on your social media, you should be sending out some kind of client survey at least once a year, just to get feedback, to find out what people need, what they want, um, what language they use, make sure you're talking to them properly in your marketing. Um, and you can do that with a, a formal survey on, you know, MailChimp, something like that, or not MailChimp, um, SurveyMonkey. You can do it with Instagram polls or Facebook polls, um, but really make sure that you're soliciting that feedback from your clients because a lot of great ideas and innovation will come from your customers and your clients and your prospects as well. So tap into that. Um, another great place for innovation is, is, is your profit centers. So figure out, sit down and look, if you've got multiple income streams, which ones are your best ones? Where are you, where you got the biggest margins? Where have you got the, the least amount of time involved in, in order to make those profits? How can you do more of that, right? And, and how can you increase your margins elsewhere? You know, sometimes it's a matter of just a couple of percentage points and it makes very little difference on a single order. If you put it, put it up instead of a, a 20% uh, profit, maybe you make a 22% profit. It may make very little difference on each individual sale. Your customers will be totally fine with it. You may not even notice that, that couple of percentage, but when you add that up at the end of the month, at the end of the year, it can make a, an enormous difference to the amount of um, extra cash that you have in your business. So really look at your, your profit centers and, and how you can increase your margins your profit on different income streams that you have. And another one, this ties back kind of to the, the implementing systems is how can you reduce your workload? Because again, the more free, when we started businesses, we're doing all the things. There's no time. You've got all of the hats on. There's no time. You just, you just get it done. But you need to have some time where you're working again on your business and not in your business. So how do you reduce your workload? And sometimes that doesn't even mean giving that, that work to someone else or automating it. Sometimes it means just setting it aside because with entrepreneurs, I don't know about you, but I have very, very long lists of the millions of things that I want to do with my business. And they don't all need to be done right now. And sometimes I forget that and I try and implement them all at the same time. And sometimes we just need to look at our list and say, all right, you know, these five things here, they're great ideas and I'm gonna do those at some point, but right now, I need to set those aside so I have time to really work on these things that are in front of me. So how can you reduce your workload? Have a look at your list and see where you can free up that space to really spend some time on business development on the items that you have in front of you. And along with that um, is really to take some white space time, schedule business development days. And this is critical. Um, I, you know, you will be absolutely stunned by all of the great ideas that come to you when you make time to have them, when you're not constantly running from one thing to the next, going through your to-do list. So you need to make business development days on your calendar, a non-negotiable appointment with yourself. And I would suggest you do at least a couple of hours every week, a half day would be great. If you're a bit further in in your business and you have some people to help you and you can take a full day every week as a business development day, even better, um, but I know not everybody's there right now, even a couple of hours per week on your schedule and you pick the time, whenever it works for you, right? You can do this anytime, um, but make it non-negotiable as if it was your most important client or uh, an appointment with the bank you couldn't break and don't break it. Don't schedule anything else in those times. Say, you know, Thursdays from 10 till noon is my business development time and nothing else gets booked there. It doesn't get moved. That is your time. Um, because then what you can do is as you're going through the week, if ideas pop up and you're really busy with some other stuff and you're working through your to-do list and you think, oh, you know what, this, this marketing idea, this might be really good. You can put it on your business development block. And then when that Thursday at 10 a.m. comes or whatever your time happens to be, you can sit down and you can really explore that idea. And it gives you a place to put those things to revisit later. Um, and 
if you want to expand on that even further, um, if you know Sarah Blakely, she takes Think Vacations, and I've done this a couple of times, and it's amazing when you give yourself that white space time, the kind of innovation you can come up with. Um, she actually will take a, you know, four or five, sometimes longer day vacation by herself, no husband, no kids, um, no schedule per se. She'll take some books, she'll take your computer, and just really give herself time to think through um, the business or 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 not. And, and that's when all of the ideas come to you. But she doesn't have a list, a to-do list that she wants to get through during that, that white space time. It's just time to actually think. And I've done that a couple of times um, for you know a couple of nights just to get out and get some time in my own head. And I, that's when I've come up with some of the best ideas. So again, if you can't, and everybody's in a different place, if you can't get away, you can't take your own little private vacation, um, that's totally fine. But what you can do is schedule those business development days. You know, if the kids are at school, you've got that, that time in the day where you normally would be doing all the things and going through your to-do list, schedule that time, make that blank space time where you can sit and you can think through your business development ideas and come up with that innovation. That's really the biggest tip for all of all of this, I don't care if you're looking at marketing, if you're looking at, you know, improving your systems, whatever it is that you're looking to innovate, giving yourself that white space time to think it through is what's going to make the difference. So there's two things I want you to do this week. I'm going to give you some homework. I'll give you an assignment. Number one, get a business development day on your schedule. Get your planner out, figure out when it's going to be, block it on your calendar, and don't book anything else there. That's the most important thing. Number two, pick one area of your business to analyze and then spend that business development day coming up with innovations to improve that particular area. And again, it'll be different for everybody. Maybe you really need to work on your systems. Maybe you really need to work on your customer service, whatever it happens to be. Maybe it's marketing, um, but make sure that you pick that one area and then you spend that business development day or that half day, whatever it happens to be, actually working through some ideas on how you can improve it. You can do that. Everybody can do that, I promise you. And it's exactly what I challenge you to do this week. I can't wait to see the incredible results you achieve.